Well, hello there, everyone. This is another web presentation for the Eastern Ohio Grazing Council, May the 14th, 2020. Uh, today, I decided to talk about stepping up our grazing game. And uh, as I put the topics together for these web presentations, I thought at some point we might want to talk about improving our grazing management above and beyond what we've done maybe last year or in the past years. And there's really no better time than than right now, right before the spring flush hits, during the spring flush, and soon thereafter uh, to change up our grazing management and do things a little bit differently. After the spring and summer kind of gets here, it's kind of too late really to change up a lot of things because we've kind of already set ourselves into to our set rotation. So let's get started. Part of stepping up our grazing game, for me at least, ha has to do with what we did last year and, and what we produced last year. And uh, this is something I try to keep in the back of my mind all the time. How, how did we do and how can I do better? And I know a lot of you are looking at this slide and saying, boy, there's an awful lot of grazing math in there. I don't know whether we want to go that far, but uh, I'm telling you, this is an easy exercise. Take your total animal weight, multiply it by 3%, because so, that's their, their body weight or what they'll eat. Uh, divide that whole number then again by 75%. That's your grazing utilization for most of us that are moving cows every three days or less. That's 75%. If you're moving them uh, once a week, probably want to go down to 60%. And then multiply by the number of days that you grazed the animals last year. This will give you a total pounds of forage that you harvested from your pastures last year. Or if we want to do this the easy way, if you've got the same amount of animals all summer and all winter, so if we're just a cow-calf operation and say we've got 25 cows, we're feeding those same 25 cows day in and day out. So think about how many pounds of hay you fed each day. Multiply that by the number of grazing days and it'll give you around the same number I'm not talking about being specific here or being exactly right because what I want you to do is then divide that total pounds of forage you harvested last year in pasture uh, by the number of acres that you actually graze and give yourself a number of what your actual yield or your harvested yield is per acre uh, our averages around here for pasture, and this is a very general statement, are around three tons per acre. We can see pastures in the four and five tons. We can see them even more. Uh, we can see a lot of pastures that are less than that if they happen to be really um, poor mine soils or really steep sandy slopes. Uh, but three ton is a good average. So then think about that and how does your pasture stack up to what the average soil survey yield should be for our pastures. I know I'll be first to admit that, that our pastures don't get close to what the soil survey says they ought to. And there are many ways to calculate this number and we can come up with different numbers overall. Generally, I just want you to, to think about what your pasture produced versus let's say the hay field next to it. Uh, farmer, as farmers, we're, we're kind of yield centric. We think about yield and how much we produced. And I think it's important for us to look back at how much pasture did our pasture acres really produce. And for me, this is what gets me thinking about how can I make my grazing system better? Where am I leaving out things? Where am I not doing things right? What little things can I do to help change my grazing system? and make sure that I'm getting the yield that, that I think I should be getting. Now, I, I shudder also to talk about this because I don't want any of you to be yield centric for the most part. I want you to be profit centric. I want you to think about profit per acre and not yield per acre. We get in trouble when we start chasing individual productivity. Like if we're trying to produce so many pounds per cow or, or a, a heavy calf or whatever, we get in trouble when we do that. But by breaking this down to the acre, um, we're not really hurting ourselves. We just want to think about it and think, where are we missing the pieces? Like I said, I don't want you to think about pasture yield and only about pasture yield. I want you to think more about profitability than anything else. But we need to know those numbers just so we know where we're at in our grazing system. 
now that we've talked about what our past year yield might have been last year, and you can even do previous years, average them together if you want. Then we have to think about why are we not getting the yield that we think we should be getting? Uh, I do this every time I go to a grazing conference. I almost always, or if I'm listening to a YouTube presentation, I almost always set myself back and say, how can this improve my operation? What are my missing pieces? And, and how can I make things better? Where am I leaving grass in the field and not getting it into the cow? Or where am I not producing enough grass? So the ways that there are the things that might help us with yield as far as a grazing system, not not enough residue. I, I know I've harped on all of you uh, in the past about that, but it takes grass to grow grass. And if we don't have residue, then we're not growing the next rotation's worth of grass. Uh, too often, what we're doing can be considered rotational overgrazing and not actual management intensive grazing. So we need to be looking at that residue first. Make sure that we're leaving the proper amount of forage behind once we move cattle on or sheep on to the next pasture. Then not enough rest. Too often our grazing systems are set up to be 30 day rotations because that's about when we would mow hay if we're going to go mow first and second crop hay. Uh, but nature is funny like that and sometimes 30 days isn't enough. Sometimes 30 days is too much. Um, maybe we're, we're not putting enough rest in or maybe we're putting too much rest in. Those both things can happen. Um, getting the proper amount of rest and getting that forage back to the correct height before we graze it has a big effect on yield because we're slowing that plant down if we go back to it too soon. Not enough diversity here again, something that I have been harping on you guys about. I've, I've done and looked into research and boy, we can make a, a world of difference in our pastures if we diversify them both in grasses but also in adding legumes and forbs and other productive species to the pasture that we currently have. Too often our pastures are dominant, one grass forage, and we need them to split that load and, and have a whole different uh, set of species out there in the pasture, a whole mix of species. And then not keeping the plants vegetative or actively growing. Uh, this is a problem that I have at our operation. Too often I let things get over mature and then they're not growing at their full potential. If we can keep plants sort of in that teenage stage, we can always keep them growing at a rapid rate, even during adverse weather events. Uh, but if we let it get too mature, then it's just not growing and not adding yield as good as it could do if it were in between that four and eight, 10 inch range of growth. And then the last one, um, not enough fertility. That too often is our default kind of thing that we look at. But as I said in the last presentation, we need to look at our animals and our management uh, to help solve some of our issues. That last one, add diversity. You know, we add legumes to a pasture field. We've all of a sudden uh, lessened our nitrogen need. Uh, there are other things. And as we get deeper into this soil health, we're, we're just barely uncovering uh, all the things that it has to do with soil fertility. Uh, that I think is, is my last resort at this point. I want to make sure that the management is correct before I worry about uh, grabbing a bag of fertility or buying in something to, to add to the soil. Right. And, and those reasons there above uh, are kind of the, the things that really hold our yield back. So up to this point, we've talked about uh, things sort of in a production sort of way, but there may be other reasons why we want to step up our grazing game. Uh, hopefully, we want to extend our grazing season. There's not many of us that are extended as far as I think we can extend our grazing season. And so often we talk about extending our grazing season uh, as fall and winter, but you know, at some point we're going to have a weather pattern that returns back to us that's going to really give us a summer slump. And we're going to have a dry period. And maybe we're trying to extend that grazing season to make sure we get through a drier period in the summer. I hope it's not this summer. I hope it never comes again. But extending the grazing season can surely take in drought as well as it can the winter dormant period. 
Maybe we want to take advantage of higher utilization rates. And, and I know um, that's a kind of a hard thing to understand, but you know, the faster we move animals, the higher our utilization rate. Because a cow eats with all four, with her mouth, all four feet, and what she leaves behind her. So the, the less days that she's there, the less grass she fouls and, and the more grass that she can eat. So if we're moving cows once a day, we may have a utilization rate of 70 or 80 percent. If we're moving them every three days, we may have a utilization rate of 65, 70 percent. Uh, if we're only moving them once a week, we may be 50, 60 percent utilization. So maybe we want to step up our grazing game in order to take advantage of that higher utilization rate percentage. And then, you know, we've talked a lot about improving our soil health. You know, grazing is one of those ways that's going to really improve our soil health. I, for one, want to regenerate my soils. I don't want them to be sustainable. I want to regenerate them. And so I want to do everything I can with grazing and with management to help regenerate our soils. And then last, you know, I hope we all subscribe to this and we want to be more profitable. And I don't mean that we all want to make a living farming or we all want to make big bucks farming. Uh, what, what I mean is, is making our operation profitable and therefore sustainable uh, so that it, it makes sense what we're doing and why we're doing it and why we're doing it this way. Uh, I, I don't think anybody's in this business to get rich. I know I'm certainly not. I'm in it for the enjoyment more than anything else. But it sure is nice to know that we are profitable and we can afford some new improvements. So if we've thought about stepping up our grazing game, um, maybe it's time to talk about changing our management a little bit. And uh, I know I talked about these different kinds of grazing or different theories of grazing uh, when I did the, the grazing definitions presentation. But, you know, if we're moving animals once a week, uh, we're, we're typically moving them by the calendar. And maybe we want to go to a more management intensive grazing system where we're measuring forage heights in and measuring forage heights out and making sure we're taking the proper amount of forage. That would be kind of a change from rotational grazing to management intensive grazing. You know, um, maybe we want to move to more of an adaptive grazing kind of management style. And, and there are great YouTube videos out there about adaptive grazing, but adaptive grazing is uh, doing different stocking densities and, and different times and different variations for different reasons in our grazing system. Uh, can make a, a huge change for soil health, uh, can be beneficial for our grazing um, operation as a whole. But it, there again, it comes down to a decision the producer wants to make. Maybe we want to do some tall grass grazing. Maybe we're tired of trying to make hay in the paddocks that get away from us here in a couple of weeks. And maybe we want to let that forage go ahead and get tall and, and drop some seed and fill up our seed bank in the soil. I know with red clover, I try to do this at least once every couple of years, allow the red clover plants to go to seed in, in a certain number of paddocks just to improve our seed bank out there in the soil. Um, <clears throat> maybe we want to talk about high stocking density grazing. We want to think about it. That's a part of the adaptive grazing for sure, or holistic management. And I hope to do a presentation here in the future about what high stocking or ultra high stocking density grazing is, uh, just to explain it a little better. But it's it's managing the stock density that we're putting on each pasture and uh, looking for different results. So we may be trying to trample more forage to add more carbon and nitrogen to our soil to improve our soil health. That's one of the, the big benefits of ultra, or high stocking or ultra high stocking density grazing. And maybe we want to move to in a different direction and think about multi-species grazing. You know, maybe we want to add some small ruminants. Maybe we want to add pasture poultry. Uh, maybe we want to think about some pasture pigs, although I would love to do a presentation on that and my thoughts on it. Um, pasture pigs are going to take some extra work. Uh, but those are options out there to kind of change up our grazing style, change up our grazing system, and, and use forage that, quite honestly, our other livestock may not be utilizing to their best advantage. So um, just a, a few ways or, or thoughts on moving to a higher management. All right, so what are some other ways that we can improve our grazing operation? And I'm just going to say right off the bat, I know I, I may make some people maybe a little mad at me uh, at mentioning some of these things, but that's okay. 
Uh, as I've said before, my job here is not to tell you how to think. My job here is to get you to think in the first place. And uh, one of the one of the great ways that we can improve our grazing operation is thinking about birthing with nature, uh, with with time, with nature and when nature uh, welcomes new animals into the fold. So when the deer are having fawns, maybe that's our best time for having livestock have their young, be that sheep lambing or cows calving. Um, I'm not saying this is for everyone. I'm not saying it's the best way, but I will say uh, I just finished reading um, Quality Pasture, which was a book that Alan Nation wrote. And since he passed away, Jim Garish took up the task and, and re kind of did that book. And uh, he, he mentioned in there that one of the best ways that we can get our grazing management on track is to put our birthing season in line with the way nature does it. And, and I, I'd never really given that a whole lot of thought, but uh, I, I thought back to when we were calving at different times. And since we've put calves uh, in that kind of natural cycle, all the things that we don't have to worry about anymore. And here again, I, I'm not saying that you should change just because I'm saying it. What I'm saying is put a pencil to it. Think about it. Think about all the things that that you do to calve when and where you do and where having your livestock born um, in more in line with where nature has them coming uh, could do for you. The next way is re retaining ownership. We've talked about that before, about keeping our calves possibly through the winter, grazing them on stockpiled grass, having them there to help us through the spring flush when we've got a lot of extra forage, putting some extra weight on them, and then selling those calves in the spring. Um, Genetics is another one, one we don't get into very often, uh, but you know, there's a lot of things we can do to improve our grazing genetics and make livestock um, more productive or more efficient on our pastures. And I'm not just talking about cattle, I'm talking about sheep as well. Um, we, there's things we do at home in buying livestock or buying in our bulls or rams uh, that make sense to us to make them more efficient on grass. Maybe we want to market, you know, maybe we want to market grass finished steers or we want to market a different kind of product through our grazing system that will help our grazing system be more profitable. Um, maybe we've got rental farms that we, we, we want to improve or we, we should be thinking about improving, if nothing else. You know, we can do some pretty cool things with rented ground and with not a whole lot of cost to help improve our grazing system and improve our grazing efficiency. So often I see rental farms that are just kind of of the thought, well, that's a rental farm and I'm not going to put money into it. Well, if we really think about how much money we would have to put in it and how much improvement we would get in our livestock, sometimes that money we have to put into it doesn't cost us all that much in the end. A reduction in animal numbers. Here's another one that I may get to someone about, and that's okay. Uh, I, I, I think a lot of our operations could do with the reduction in animal numbers. Um, yes, in, on the onset, that sounds like we would be less profitable, but if it gets us more grazing days and we have to buy or produce less hay, are we really less profitable? I'm not sure that we would find that we are. Uh, I, I know I, I, I'm guilty as most everyone else that I, I have a few more animals than I probably should have. Did we graze 220, 230 days out of the year? Yes. But would I like to graze more days out of the year? I certainly would. And I could do with a reduction in animals. And then also looking at our cost versus returns. We talked about that last week. Uh, what does it cost us for this or that or the other? And what is the return to our grazing system going to be? And, and always remember, when we're talking about grazing, we're, we're talking about increasing the number of cow grazing days not the number of cows grazing. We want to increase the number of cow grazing days, therefore extending our grazing season and not in, in, increase the number of cows we have grazing our pasture. Well, that's a wrap for this week's web presentation. As always, we'll end by thanking our sponsors. Also, I uh, want to send a thank you to Beth for going out and getting us some new fresh spring pictures. We were kind of running low on pictures and 
what we were going to put in these backgrounds. And, and I know we've got comments about the great pictures that we get added. So thanks, Beth, for getting us some new stuff to put in there. Um, as we go along here, we'll do another web, web presentation for next week. Uh, we still are undecided, I think, on our pasture walk for the end of May, although if any of you are watching the news, it, it looks mighty unlikely. So we'll continue to do web presentations as time goes by and uh, hope you all are enjoying them. We'll see you next time.